Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Um, I hope you're having a good week. Yes. Um, um. So, as all of you guys know, we pre-record our episodes. And so, as we are speaking to you right now, live on the air, um, Harry Styles just released his new single. Mm-hmm. And I just... This is now becoming a Harry Styles um, podcast. Listen, it doesn't have to be always about Harry, but just like, you know, (laughs) the big milestones, we have to talk about them a little bit. 100%. Everybody go watch the video. If -hmm. you're a true 1D fan, you'll know who that video was for. Oh, you'll definitely know. That's all I have to say on that. Mm -hmm. Um, We're not going to get into it. For real though, I do love the song. Love the music video. Not sponsored by Harry, but I wish we were. So. Right. No, it came out, what, less than two hours ago. I've watched it like four or five times. <laughs> no, we do. <laughs> it's like dangerous. I can't wait for the album. Yeah, anyway, uh-huh. anyway, anyway. Harry Styles Corner over. I just had to, you know, show my love for him. Mm-hmm. As I said. Um, I also want to show our love to our new listeners. Um, I've been seeing that we were getting yeah. some more listeners coming along. Shout out to you all. Um, yeah, we're getting a little fan base. Cute. Um, and I wanted to say you're always welcome to, like, email us or DM us any ideas or some little stories. And we actually have somebody this week who has sent something in for us. Yes. So if you know, if you listened to last week's episode, I talked about the legend of the Castle of Good Hope. And that is in South Africa. And actually, one of our listeners lives around the area. And has a story from when they visited there. So mm-hmm. we kind of figured we would just maybe play it for you guys if you wanted to hear it. Which we're, we can't hear your feedback. So we're going to take that as a yes. Yeah. So here it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name's is I listened to your podcast for quite a while. And I kind of just want to tell you a little bit of a creepy story that happened to me while I was at the Castle of Good Hope. Because I live in SA. Um, so what happened was, uh, our tour guide, Joe, was showing us this room that was, like, airtight, and when he closed the door, like, it would be sealed, and then people would suffocate in there. So he told us about his previous tour, where there was this little girl and her mom, and there was, like, ten other people in the room, and he was showing them. And the little girl was looking into the corner, like, the whole time. And then she put up her hand, and her mom was like, no, put down your hand, don't, don't say anything. And then... Guy, the tour guide was trying to be nice, so he was like, oh, like, what, what, what's your question? And she was like, why are there those two skeleton men in the corner uh, on their hands and knees? And obviously everybody looked and there was no skeleton men there in the corner on their hands and knees crying. I thought it was just creepy and I thought you guys might like to know. So, yeah. Ew. Like, I'm so sorry, but that is so creepy. I got I, it really is. immediate like, goosebumps. Uh huh. I I mean I also immediately thought though like what if that girl's just like a paid actor? Okay, also <laughs> just to that's make true. it seem <laughs> that's just true. to make it seem scary. Because <laughs> let me tell you, if had I been in that room, I don't care how sealed it was, I would be running as absolutely fast as I could to get out of there. <laughs> like, oh, right. Like oh no. I don't know. Oh I would. Oh that's so scary. Because also. So just imagine she's not a paid actor and imagine she really did see those skeleton men. Can you imagine seeing skeleton men in the corner? Oh, no. Oh, oh no. God. That place is so oh, scary. No. That place is and, so scary. So, and the fact that, you know, like, kids are supposed to be able to see that stuff more. I know. Than adults because they're, like, I guess closer to the other side, people say. Yeah. So that makes me believe it more. So that's even creepier. <laughs> I know. So creepy. Um, shout out to Nico for yes. sending in the amazing story. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And if you have any other stories, send them in. Because we love all the creepy things. So. Yeah. And we might we might feature you if it's good enough. <laughs> yeah, better be good. And don't be lying. I want only the truth up in here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we I guess, only I mean, we'll... speak truth in this truth podcast of truth. Sure. Um, anyways. <laughs> no, but how would we even know? <laughs> That's the whole story, point. <laughs> we would never know. Okay, you're um, right. You're right. <laughs> anyways, um, moving along. I guess that was a very long intro. Yeah. Today. I mean, it was okay. Let's let's get into my story now. That's um, fine. I have another 
another spooky spookiness. Yay. Um, <laughs> we love some good spook magooks. Okay, so this week we're we're moving away from South Africa. Okay. Um, this is back in America. Okay. Um, we're in Missouri. I don't know nothing about Missouri. Me either. <laughs> <laughs> Except I do know about Zombie Road. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Walking Dead so, who? I mean, I, I guess we'll see. So, <laughs> this is Zombie Road in Wildwood, Missouri. Ooh, um, that which fake. is <laughs> sounds fake. <laughs> Lucky. Um it the real name of the road was Lawler Ford Road. Mhm. Um of course. I mean, what else would it be? I mean, obviously. Uh, First of all, that's too it, hard to say. <laughs> right. That's why people just went with zombie, I guess. Exactly. Uh, um, it was constructed in the eight, in the late 1860s um, and was built for access to the Merrimack River. And, like, there was railroad tracks right at the end of it, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was actually kind of dangerous because there were weird shadows and curves that made it hard to see what was ahead of you at night. Yeah, I hate that. I hate driving in places like that. Mm-hmm. And obviously no street lights. It was 1860s back yeah. then. Um, and it actually stopped being used for a while, and it got, like, worn down and abandoned. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the 1950s, it started being called Zombie Road. Oh. Because there were some... some Zombies. Legends. Mm. Um, it was It was popular for teens to go over here, uh... In the 50s, they would go over there to, like, have parties and drink. Of course. You typical know. teen behavior. Exactly. Uh, and I feel like in the 1950s, there were always kids going to, like, random places in the woods or, like, on a random road. I mean, like, we literally did that when I was in high school. <laughs> well, Just I went guess... into the middle of the woods. I mean, I feel like, I, you know, North Carolina, that's pretty country yeah. um, compared to Philly. But, like, we would always have parties in the woods. Yeah, see, now I'm thinking, like, maybe it's just because I didn't live really near. No, 100% near the woods it is. Because, so like, everybody parties in the woods when you're mm-hmm. not, like, in a city. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> um, but yeah, they would do that. Uh, and, like, because it was, like, rarely ever traveled down, nobody would really go over there except for the teens who were partying. The perfect party place. Exactly. Um, and people even say, like, like, this is the time period where it started to get, like, a reputation for be- for being haunted. Oh. Um, and people say that there's a crossroads there that you can make a deal with the devil. Oh, snap. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, no. Um, and it is said to be one of the most haunted roads in the world, of course. <laughs> of course, yeah. I think everything is the most haunted whatever, you know? 100% it is. They always say that. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can you prove otherwise? You can't. True. I mean, what, where is the scale? Like, how do you (laughs) measure that? Right. There is no scale. Yeah. Um, And also this, this rating as most haunted is according to dangerousroads.com. Oh, okay. Very reputable. (laughs) Very interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. So, a little bit about, like, what the road is now. So, today, you could actually go to this road. It's it's a trail. It's not even a road anymore. Oh, wow. Um, it's like a paved trail, um, about 2.3 miles long. And it is called Rock Hollow or Al Foster Trail. I don't know. I think that it might be two different ones. Or oh, the same yeah. one with two different names. I don't really know. Um, but it's like a bike trail paved greenway. And it's closed at dusk. So you're not allowed to go party on there anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a thousand dollar fine if you go. Ooh, that's um, steep. Yeah. And the trailhead is, of course, called the trail the trailhead of the undead. Oh, yeah. I would expect nothing less than that. <laughs> yeah. And sections of the trail is called Zombie East and Zombie West. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you must be wondering, why is it called Zombie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I really why am. is there only Zombie? 
So, like, it does have a reputation for being haunted and stuff, but um, the main story is about a zombie killer who lived on the, on a shack on this road. Like, he killed zombies? <laughs> Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> um, he would come out and kill people. Oh, my um, God. Um, mainly young couples. Oh, my God. Um, and this is also familiar to, like, other stories of haunted roads and stuff in the 50s. Mm-hmm. I feel like they had so many yeah, stories like, of killers they're, like, on the these, Lover's like... Lane killers. Like, yes. I think is what they're called. Because, like... You know, pe- like, people need places, like, where teenagers can go and, like, kiss and stuff. You know, those mm-hmm. places. And it's also a good place, I guess, if you want to murder some people who are trying to sneak around. Yeah. Not yeah. according to me. According to the killers. Or it's a good place to make up a legend for so people don't go out there and do okay, it. Exactly. Exactly. Which, honestly, I half think that's what this this was. But anyways. Um... There are stories, yeah, of this guy coming out and killing people. Um, The story was that there was a man named Zombie. Oh. Like, that was his name, Zombie. Well, that makes sense. (laughs) And he would kill people. Um, And people say that he escaped from a mental hospital. Ooh. And lived in a shack on, on the road. So creepy. Um, and they say he would kill his victims and leave behind the blood-soaked clothes. Ew. Yeah. Gross. But I don't know if this was ever verified to be actually true I was or if it's just, just a story. just going so. past that. So, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. I mean, it could very well just be a story. For sure. I didn't really find much on it being true, so mm. I, I guess I can't disprove it, Who's but, you to know. to say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, there are many other ghostly things on this trail other than this legend. Um, so it, it gets its name from this, this main story of like this killer who would come out and get you. But there's also a legend of a woman who was hit by a train. Oh. Cause I told you there's like a train track yeah. right at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so she was hit by a train and haunts the area. And unfortunately, this is a real story. No, that's sad. Yes. So the railway at the, the railway at the end of the road, um Miss Della Hamilton McCullough, uh she was the wife of a local judge. And she was hit by a train and died in 1876. So mm. a long, long time ago. Yeah. Um, but over the years, the train has been derailed frequently because of, like, the bend right there was so sharp. Mm -hmm. So it was dangerous. Yeah. Um, and there's actually many victims. She was just one that people know of. That's so sad. Also, Mm -hmm. why did they build it in such a dangerous place? I mean, it was, like, the 1800s. I don't know. People were stupid back then. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they hadn't learned yet. <laughs> they didn't have as much safety precautions as we I do I guess, now. but I just feel like that's common sense. But yeah, I guess maybe. they didn't have that either, so it's fine. True. Um, it is now disconnected, though, so we got that. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, another um, haunted factor is there are Native American ghosts that haunt the area. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, this road actually has a long history of Native American tribes, um, like, traveling on it. Because mm-hmm. parts of this road originated as a trail created by the Natives. No way. Mm-hmm. That's wild. So, that's pretty cool. Um, and it is also believed to be a huge burial ground. Oh. Around there, oh. so. That's where the ghosts that. come from, yeah. Mm-hmm. Got it. Say less. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, so there's no, like, ghost in particular that's a Native American one, but there are just, like, you know, Mm -hmm. a few around the area. Um, And another creep factor (laughs) of this area is that it was a resort community around here that was built in the mid-1940s, which is, like... I'm not judging, but also I am judging a little bit because, like, why would you go to why? a resort town in in the middle Missouri? Of, I 
Maybe it's cheap. I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think actually the the town that I used to live in, they say that some of the houses up there were a resort town. Interesting. All like, of our Missouri fans town. are going to unfollow us because we're hating on Missouri so hard. No, I know. I'm sorry. I feel sorry. like we always do this. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> we don't mean it. But We've never been there. We can't judge it. Listen, yeah. <laughs> but it's like the only reason I'm judging is like if you think resort, you think like beach or something. Well, I mean, right? for sure. Like, I don't even know where Missouri is. You don't? No. <laughs> Listen, we're not good at geography. No, but <laughs> you should know this by now. Everyone should know this by now. I'm so sorry. Yeah. It's part of our charm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the charm. Um, stupid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, but anyways. Anyways. Um, this was, it was built as a resort community and it has since been left abandoned. Oh, Wow. Yes. Those so now, notes. so now, there's this creepy haunted trail and also a bunch of abandoned houses. <laughs> okay, I want to go here. Honestly, I've always wanted to explore like abandoned houses. Like I would know. I like I've explored cool. abandoned houses. I want to go to a whole entire ghost town. Yeah, I don't know how many are there. I mean, I guess a resort community seems like that a sounds lot. Sounds like a community right? to me. Yeah. I think some people do live in some of the houses still, um, like, year-round, but many are left empty. Interesting. So. Take back everything we said in Missouri. Here we come. Right. Honestly, we're <laughs> going to take one of those bandit houses for our, for ourselves. Yeah. It's our new um, podcast studio. Yes. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> okay. So, um, obviously, this is pretty it creepy to have a bunch of abandoned houses uh, for sure. um, and some people say that they f- see like people waving from some of the houses ew. Ew, ew, and ew. they find out later that nobody actually lives there ew. yeah um ew. and at the end of the trail near some of the houses people often see a woman yelling at them from one oh, of the houses Lord. that's horrible. um yeah, and then they find out later that she was not actually there. Yikes. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do have some other ghostly things. Uh, there is another ghost of a boy. Um, and this boy is believed to be the same... Is to, believed to be one who, like, he fell into the river and died. No. And his body was never found. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. Um, and there are ghosts of Confederate soldiers. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, because they used this path during the Civil War. Yeah. Um, and people say that they feel, like, general unsettling feelings. That makes you know. complete sense. Yeah. Um, and then there are sensations of people watching you. Ew. Mm-hmm. Ew. Ooh, that literally just gave me goosebumps as <laughs> you said that. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, taking my daily walk on this trail and then just feeling people wa- watching me. Ew. Disgusting. Disgusting, disgusting. Yeah, no thanks. Um, there's also disembodied footsteps, so oh, that just good. goes along with the feeling of being watched. Ew. Imagine you're just, like, walking, like, you're taking your lunch walk, and then you just hear somebody, like, walking up beside you, and you're just trying to move out of the way, and then nobody's there. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah, that, ugh. No. Um, and then this last one is honestly the least scary. (laughs) (laughs) Um, that there are people, people claim to have seen strange lights and orbs. Ooh, orbs. (laughs) <laughs> I know, I know how much you love the orbs, Taylor. I hate an orb, but, yeah. you know, sometimes they're believable, so you never know. Yeah, honestly, true. Um, But yeah, that's Zombie Road, and I honestly, I don't know why they still call it Zombie Road. Okay, honestly, like... I love the story, but I'm just really mad that it's called Zombie Road, because I was ready for a zombie story. Right, I wish there were more zombies involved. I know. Like, they just named this random man zombie. And it's like, why right, did he like, have to do that? Right, and that's probably not even his real name if this man even exists. Like, exactly. I don't get it. I'm puzzled, but you know what? 
Zombie Road's still pretty cool. And I would honestly like to go visit there. Yeah. It would be fun. It would be. It would indeed be. But, <clears throat> anywho, um, I was thinking of a way to ha- of how I was going to transition. Um, our stories are very different this week, but the similarity. I feel, okay, okay. I feel like we always say that, but then we still find connections anyway. I know. Well, there is a connection, is that we both unexpectedly went out of the United States last week, but we are both back in the United States this week. Oh, okay, um, okay. So, I have for you today a conspiracy theory. <laughs> we love a conspiracy. Yes. So, this is the conspiracy of Elvis Presley. Dun, dun, <gasps> dun. Okay. Okay. What I'm, about him? <laughs> listen, I'm going to really try to not sing any of his songs because I don't want to get copyrighted because mm-hmm. I don't have the rights. But... Just know that I want to sing all of them to you all right now. So, anyway. Also, why do I feel like there's so many different theories about things about Elvis? Oh, there's so many different. So, so which one is it? You just wait. Which one is it that we're talking about today? Well, so, I have a little intro before I get there. But, so we all know Elvis, right? If you don't know Elvis, I would say that you're probably Patrick Starr and that you live under the rock, under a rock. Because yeah, Elvis definitely. is, if you don't know, the king of rock and roll. One of, like, the most famous people in the whole entire world ever. Um, <sighs> but in case you don't know, I'll list some of his most famous songs. Um, Can't Help Falling in Love With You, fave. Burning Love, my literal all-time favorite. Um, Hound Dog, Jailhouse Rock, and literally so many more. Like, if I, I could sit here for an hour and name just the songs that he also, sang. Also, just watch Lilo and Stitch and you'll yeah, get it there. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Like Elvis is everywhere. Um so Elvis, the man himself, was born on January eighth, nineteen thirty five, and he allegedly died on August sixteenth, nineteen seventy seven. <gasps> However, the mm-hmm. conspiracy theory that I'm going to tell you all about today is that some people believe that Elvis faked his death back in 1977 to continue living a normal life instead of, like, a super famous rock star life. Hmm. Dun, dun, dun. So, this is the conspiracy theory of, did Elvis fake his death? Okay. Hmm. Boom. Boom, man. I don't know. I feel like right now I'm going to say it's a maybe. <laughs> so, you've never heard of this theory before. I've heard of it, but I don't know if I know the details. See, that's crazy. This one I've known about for a long time. And honestly, there's lots of proof that it could be mm. real. Okay. So I'll just say, let's put that out there while I, um, before I give you all the facts. So um, before I get into the theories, I'm going to give you just like a little recap of Elvis's life because it's important. So he actually grew up completely dirt poor in Mississippi. And then eventually moved to Memphis, Tennessee when he was a teenager with his fam. So his family just rolled up into Memphis, Tennessee. And I guess like Elvis had, he always loved to sing like even when he was like a baby. So I guess when he moved to Tennessee, he was like, I'll just put, throw some auditions out there just to see, you know, YOLO, I guess. And Mm -hmm. um, actually literally only like a week after they got to Tennessee, a producer at Sun Records actually called Elvis to respond to his audition and oh, they no straight up just wanted to make him an offer. They were like, you're amazing. And obviously he was completely poor. So he was like, yeah, I'm accepting. Wait, Anything. so how old was he? Um, a teenager. I don't know if I have the exact age, but he was just like a little teenager. Okay. So, um, so then pretty much immediately they got a band together for him and they started recording. So his music career took off. Like, Literally, one day he was poor, the next day he was, like, a superstar, which is crazy. <laughs> that um, is insane. And really, it is insane. Um, and so then, after he did music for a while, um, you know, tours and all this stuff, he wanted to star in some movies, too. So, he was, this man, he was doing it all. Um, Honestly, okay, the way I'm about to compare him to Harry Styles. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, literally... He's doing it all. Harry, if you're listening, please don't fake your death. Or at least if you do, tell me about it. Right. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, <laughs> but, okay, at the same time that he was, like, making all this music and starring in movies, he was also very much so living the rock star lifestyle, which, you know, means partying, never sleeping, eating, like, really super unhealthy, just going really hard in general. And so, tragically, in the summer of 1977, he was about to begin yet another tour, and then literally the night before the tour started, he died, allegedly, um, by oh, a heart attack. I didn't know that. Brought on by severe drug abuse, is what the report said. And he was only 42 years old huh. when he, quote unquote, died. <laughs> so, I didn't realize he died right before a tour. Yeah, uh, like literally uh, like a world tour. Oh. The day before it was supposed to start. Okay, I mean, that is a coincidence, so... Nah, that's what I see. That, and that's just, that's step number one. We haven't yeah. even gotten to, that's just the story. Like... You're right. So, oh, my God. Yeah, it's sus. And I mean, like, yeah, I'm sure he was on a lot of drugs. Like, he was a rock star. But... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just think it's a little, like, that's a little convenient, if you ask me. Um... Also, just because in general, like, when people are about to go on tour, they're normally, like, resting, chilling. Like, they're about to go on tour. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, right. I feel like people like, normally party, like, while they're on tour. Mm-hmm. Not before. But I guess I don't really know. I'm not a rock star, sadly. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyways, so when news broke of his death, obviously people, like, loved him and they were very shocked. So they began mourning and... Just talking about he tr- how he truly lived the American dream. And I'm like, what, girlfriend? <laughs> like, yeah, honestly, I feel like that's not the, <laughs> that's not the American dream. Mm-hmm. The American dream is a little house, white picket fence. Yeah. Like a, a family. A wife and two kids. Yes, a husband. Specifically a husband, wife, and two kids. Yes, like, exactly. Um, and like maybe a little dog. But yeah. no, a rock star life, that is not uh, the A rock American star life, dream. a millionaire, bajillionaire, like, absolutely, that is not <laughs> the American dream. So Are I they, was just like, what? I bet, they're, I bet they're just talking about his success and, like, how he, Yeah, came you know, from nothing. No, that's what they mean. But I'm yeah. like, but that's still, not like, the that's same not, thing at yeah. all. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But also, pretty much immediately, um, at the same time, people were like, oh, he lived the American dream. People were also just really speculating, like, that he might not have actually died. Like, from the get-go, they were like, well, that's really coincidental. Like, Mm -hmm. that's a little bit weird. Like, it's a little bit weird. Even if he really did die then. Like, it's still, that's a huge coincidence. So, despite the clear statements from doctors and the coroner, many people believe that he actually faked his death so that he can go into hiding um, and yeah, so over the past four or five decades, fans across North America have insisted that they have spotted Elvis out and about living a normal life. There's photo evidence, there's like video evidence, there's a lot of things and they all could have been altered. Who knows? But people really claim that they see Elvis even today. Okay. But today, like how old would he be today? <laughs> he would be very old. Actually, there. I'll get into it later of when people... People do think that he actually is dead today. Yeah. Like, as I'm saying this, but that he 100% faked his death and lived up until a different point in time. So... See, it's crazy to think that, like, if he did that, you would never know because he's gone by now. I know. Well, maybe. We'll get into it, though. Well, okay. <laughs> there's, there's a lot to deep dive into for this. Um, so... This was actually, like, such a big thing. (laughs) Like, it was, like, probably, I would say, like, not one of the first conspiracy theories, but just a really popular, popular conspiracy theory back in the day before they were really a thing, you know? So, back in 1989, three superfans of Elvis actually created the Elvis Sighting Society to (laughs) monitor all of the incidents of, to try to, like, I guess to try to track him down. Hmm. The ESS. The ESS. <laughs> like the OSS and Spy Kids. Exactly. Um, <laughs> but this time the mission is to find Elvis, and that's the only mission we have. Um, so well. it really goes as far, okay, that people actually say Elvis <laughs> appears as an extra in Home Alone. 
What? <laughs> I know. I'm like, okay, guys, come on now. The whole point was so he didn't have to do that stuff. Why would he go with the, I know. Why would he be in a movie? I know. And, I mean, like, I'm sure people just look like Elvis. You know what I'm saying? Like, people look like other people. Yeah. So, no, definitely. I don't know about the Home Alone one, but anyway, let's get into the theories of why. Why, why would he want to do this? So, the first one that I'm going to talk about is that some believe Elvis was connected to the mafia. And oh. that him faking his death was to escape the mafia. So, <clears throat> excuse me, a woman actually wrote an entire book called Is Elvis Alive? And she claims that she has read the thousands upon thousands of FBI documents that prove that Elvis is actually in witness protection. What? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. She's... So who is this lady? So her name is Gail Brewer um, Giorgio. And okay. she says, she actually does say, she's like, I have no idea if Elvis is alive today. But that she knows for 100% certain fact statement truth that he did not die on August 16th, 1977. That, hmm. I know, I know. Witness protection, like... I know. I just, do we know what happened with the mafia, if that's the case? So, let's get into it. According to the FBI records that Gail says that she's read, um, basically, the FBI enlisted Elvis as an undercover agent in 1976, which would be a year before he died, to help with agents, like, just to help the FBI infiltrate a criminal organization known as the Fraternity which apparently the fraternity is like this, it's just made up, it's like a club, like a boys club for racketeers. Okay. Um, so, bunch of can bad you guys. Re- wait, can you remind me what racketeering is? It's basically just like stealing, mon- stealing money, I think, right? You know, actually, I think it is stealing money from like big See, companies. But... I definitely like know that word, but I'm like, <laughs> okay, really I'm asking for our listeners, not for me, because I'm... <laughs> But also I mean, for you, I, I know. right? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's stealing money from big corp. Honestly, don't quote me on that. But I do know that it's really bad. It's like a very heavy crime. Let me. Yeah. Let me you. How about you tell us what racketeering is? Okay. Also, just want to say sorry to the listeners if you can hear it. Not sure if you can. There's a huge storm going on outside my house right now. <laughs> and we're in a tornado watch. So hopefully I don't have to just like escape this podcast recording oh, geez. for a tornado. I hope you're, yeah, hopefully it's fine. You're okay. I think it's fine. But the wind and the rain kicking, slashing against my window right now. So so sorry if you can hear that. I can't well, I... control the weather. So <laughs> Yeah, I don't I can't hear anything, so I don't know. Um but racketeering, it says it's dishonest and fraudulent business dealings. Okay. So that's okay. pretty general. Yeah. So it's like the businessmen. So like a lot of people, when they get caught with racketeering, like, that's why it's so serious. Because, like, they've done a lot of stuff by the time they get caught. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like, yeah. oh, we're stealing a TV from Walmart. It's like, let's steal billions of dollars from these companies. Like, Yeah, it's like fraud and extortion. Yeah, all at once. There you go. So, yeah. anyways, I don't know. So, the part that confuses me about this, that basically the FBI wanted Elvis to join the fraternity... And, like, infiltrated it and whatever the heck he, they wanted him to do. Yeah. I guess it's because, like, maybe people would trust him since they knew it was Elvis. You know? But also, mm-hmm. I'm just like, it could really be anybody. Why you gotta send Elvis in? But Right. Like, why would you send in one of, like, the... Somebody in the public eye? Yeah, I don't know. To do this. So, um, apparently... What they say, what um, Gail says, is that Elvis agreed to help them out because he has, like, a very strong love for America and a very high regard for the FBI. And I'm like, I mean, maybe. Like, if if the FBI came to me and was like, we want you to be a secret spy, honestly, I'd be like, absolutely, yes. I mean, (laughs) yeah. I honestly... So... That's true. You know, I can't, if it is true, I can't blame him because I was, I was like, why would he do it? But then I'm like, I would do it. That sounds so cool. 
Right. So, right. yeah, I can't blame him if he really didn't do it. Anyway. Um, See, okay, but it would, it sounds so cool, but you can't tell anyone. But you could after. I mean, not Maybe. if you have to fake your death. Well, so, <laughs> that's a good transition. Um, basically, they say that the people in the fraternity found out that he was actually a mole. And that he literally had no choice but to fake his death because if he didn't, he would 100% be killed. And there was no doubt about it. So, basically, if he he was going to die and that that's why he had to fake his death. Which, I mean, I feel like it's a far out thing to think about, but it could be true. I don't know. Yeah. I don't really know. So, um, oh, I lost. Okay, so. Obviously, Gail cannot just come out here and say all this and have no answers. So the FBI was asked, what the heck files are she talking about? You know, like, make them public. So the FBI, they were like, okay, can't lie. We do have some files on him. (gasps) But that is because he has been the target of several extortion attempts. So that's their response. Uh... And that actually came straight from the FBI. And I'm like, okay, so that's interesting. Because he was I mean, connected. Yeah. In See, the but it, make, it makes sense because he had a lot of money. I so. know. And I'm like, okay, this, I mean, honestly, it sounded crazy at the beginning. But the more I dug into it, I'm like, it, mm, I don't know. Like, it, it's crazy, but it really could be true. Um, so, they ended up releasing the documents, actually. And I only went through some of them because there's a lot of them. And basically, it shows, like, a bunch of different things. Like, there was something, something really weird with his plane business. Like, somebody stole a plane from him. But then, he like, had he... had a plane? Apparently. Like, th- these are things I never knew. And I'm like, suddenly, I don't know anything about Elvis. Do you think Elvis was a pilot? I don't know. Sure, he might Very have cool. been a super spy, is what this is saying. Like, I don't know anything about Elvis. Okay, you're right. If he was a spy, he was probably a pilot. Right. That's what I'm saying. And also, like, no, but the fact that he literally did have a plane. I'm like, that's super crazy, too. Not the fact that he mm-hmm. has a, cr- a plane, but just, like, something with the plane happened to the F, like, to the extent that the FBI had to get involved. Mm-hmm. Crazy. I don't know. So, um, but, like, the head of the FBI at the time when they were asked about all of this and they, like, released the documents or whatever, um, he said, I didn't even write his name down, but doesn't really matter. He said that, quote, all of the evidence points that Elvis died, the medical evidence, the eyewitness reports, um, to have him fake his death would have required the silence and services of literally hundreds, if not thousands of people over the years. So basically the FBI leader is like, that's impossible. And I'm like, that's exactly what you would say. I mean, if he was in witness protection, I mean, like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, people in witness protection, really, you never will hear from them again. That's the whole right. point. That's the whole point of the program. Right. And it, it, like, it does work for people. So, I don't know how... I mean, this that's is what, a... That's what I'm saying. This is, like, a high... Um, high profile. Level. Yeah. A high level one. Because it's, like, yeah, for Elvis to fake his own death, like, that's going to take a lot more people than me or you. Because exactly. Because he's way, way him. well known. Yes. But, I mean, that doesn't mean it's not impossible. Exactly. That does not mean it's not possible at all. Not at all. It's, no, and especially back then, because now I feel like the technology, if it would be way harder to, like, fake a famous person's death because people would be like, oh, I spotted them here, you know? Oh, 100%. <laughs> it's like, and 100%. it's all over the internet. And that's but. the interesting thing, actually, is with this, is that as technology progressed, people were having more and more pictures of what looked to be like an older Elvis. And these some of these mm. pictures actually are like it's an old man who looks like Elvis. It's not like somebody who looks like young Elvis now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know, that's weird too. Mm. That's weird too. So moving on from that, um, this is that's a little bit more like just a theory. This is just evidence of what why people say um he faked his death. So actually his name is spelled wrong on his tombstone. Did you know that? Huh. No. How is it spelled? So, um, it's his middle name that's spelled wrong. It's, um, so it says Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, instead of Aaron with one A. 
A R O N. So it's not like a huge like deal, but skeptics say that it's purposefully spelled wrong and others say that he actually started spelling his name with two A's only later in life. So like that's why they put two A's on it. But I'm like that's mm. weird. Like is that true? Why did he start spelling his name? Like why did he knock the extra letter off? You know what I'm saying? Like that's yeah. weird. Yeah, that is weird. Or add it on, I mean. Like, that's, I don't know. Like, that's, it's weird. Also, you're going to misspell mean, his name? One of the most famous people in history? Right. Like, no, that's I th- weird. I mean, I guess it makes sense because that is the way you normally spell Aaron. Mm-hmm. But, but at the same time, yeah. Like, why would he just decide to change it just because people always misspelled it? So he's like, okay, fine, I'll just go by the normal way to spell it. That's right. Like, that's so weird. Like, that's, I don't know. Just That's just weird. So, could be a coincidence, could not be. I don't know. There's a lot of coincidences in this story. So I'm just like, uh, I don't know. So, another big theory. This one actually had a name called the Black Helicopter, which, as you can imagine, <laughs> um... Some people claim that a black helicopter actually holds the key to his disappearance. So, apparently there were several sightings of a big black helicopter landing in Graceland at Elvis' mansion in Memphis, Tennessee, only a few hours before his body was discovered. Okay? Like, a lot of eyewitnesses saw the helicopter. So, that is, like, super suspicious. They came and picked him up. (laughs) They came and picked him up. So people speculate that he was picked up and flown to South America where he could lay low. So. Hmm. Well, okay. So that what? Did they like plant another body? Like how do they? I mean, who's to say the medical examiner and whoever isn't in on it? I actually took a whole entire class in college because I studied forensic science and actually a lot so this is crazy if you don't know this so there's a difference actually between medical examiners and coroners did you know that um i never really thought about it (laughs) because i always thought they were interchangeable Uh um but however they're not medical examiners um obviously have schooling they're doctors like officially like phds um and they are hired by the state However, coroners are government officials who are elected, and they don't oh. have to have any. All they have to have is a high school diploma. They don't have to have any other ed- education. Nothing at all. What? And I and know they're just government. Yeah. Oh, how are they? They're elected, elected officials. People. Okay. When I learned that, I was very shocked. Okay, <laughs> I was very shocked. Oh so my God. what I'm saying is, they are saying that the coroner. And whoever else, the police, are saying that he died. There's no, I mean, I never saw Elvis's body. Who's, I mean, there are so many corrupt coroners in the world. There's so many documentaries about it. If you've never heard of this, go watch them. They're crazy. It'll blow your mind. Because they're elected officials and they don't need any education. So you could really just say, uh, because overall, at the end of the day, the coroner, or medical examiner, whichever you have in the place, wherever you are, they have the final say of the death, the cause of death. So, yeah, what does the coroner even do then? I mean, they just literally determine the cause of death based on... Okay, so me or you could just become one. 100% yes. That's so crazy, because <laughs> how am I supposed to just walk up to, like, and just know? I know, that, uh, I know. And I mean, I'm not saying all corners are bad. I mean, most of them, I would say, most of them do have education. Yeah, but I'm saying that there yeah. are some, and there have been cases where this has led to really bad things. So, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Tangent aside, That's I'm just saying, just because the coroner said that he died of a heart attack does not necessarily mean that has to be true. Also, okay, another thing, though, did... You said he was on drugs, supposedly. Yeah. Did they say what drugs? Absolutely not. <gasps> I looked it up because I was like, I want to know what drugs Elvis was taking. No, I couldn't find any. No, because that honestly could either convince could convince me either way. True. Cause, like, because like you need to know what makes of drugs. 
Yeah, because, like, if it was more of a party drug, then that's, like, okay, well, why was he doing that? Like, exactly. He, what we were saying before, why would he be partying before The night before tour? his tour. Makes but no if sense. it's more of, like, a drug that, like, you know, people... He's chilling. Who are addicts yeah. just, like, take. Yeah. And he accidentally OD'd, and she's like, okay, well, that makes more sense. Exactly. But, you know. But who knows? Who's to say? Because it doesn't say, I don't know, which is also weird. So, the evidences are not looking too good, honestly. I really do not think that he died that day. Um, But I do have a theory that is just absolutely not true, but I want to share it to you anyway because it's funny. So, um, well, actually, there's two that are kind of similar. So, um, the theory. Elvis returned to live at Graceland disguised as the groundskeeper. Okay. Why? Why would he do that? Why would he do that? Um, the reason why people think this is because there are videos of a groundskeeper there that has a long gray ponytail, and apparently he's like an old man, but he looks a lot like Elvis. But photo and an- photo analysis actually proves that the man appears too short to be how tall Elvis was. So it's like definitely not him at all. Okay. Also, why people, would he do that? All right. But like, don't people supposedly shrink over time? Like when you get older, you can, you can be okay, shorter. No, that is true. Actually, everybody will shrink over time. That's true. Okay. But I think he was like far shorter. Like you're not going to okay. shrink like a lot, you know? Yeah. So, so, well, so I mean, okay. The housekeeper who was, who was, living in his house afterwards so i mean his family his wife his kids okay. i don't know who else lives there like it's like on this whole estate so like it's like a lot of people see and then if he did stay and live there he definitely would have like they would know 100 and, and then i feel like it would be easier to slip out that way yeah i agree because if he actually faked his death, he probably didn't tell his family. Like, they think he's dead, right? Well, maybe. I don't know. I was going to say, like, yeah, I mean, it has to be because the rest of them didn't go into witness protection. Mm-hmm. But a part of me believes that if he really didn't die, like, they knew. You know? Yeah. Like, maybe he came back and, like, gave them signs. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. Cause I, it, I don't know. I mean... I don't know. It could be too risky to actually tell them. It's true. It's true. And I actually do have a quote from Elvis's daughter, but I'll get to that later. Um, so this one, this one is really funny to me personally, um, is that the other theory is Elvis is alive today and preaching the good word as a singing pastor in Arkansas. Oh my God. What? <laughs> so apparently there's this pastor named Bob Joyce who looks almost identical to Elvis and he is the singing pastor and they have a very similar voice. So that's how people came up with the theory. But Bob Joyce (laughs) insistently denies that he is not Elvis. He's like, I'm sorry. I wish I was, but I'm not. So, but also I'm like, if he was Elvis, would he not say that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I just simply don't know. Do you know how old he would be today? Um, I can do the math real quick. Okay, so Elvis Aaron Presley would be today in 2022, 87. So, I mean, it's literally, I'm telling you, he could literally still be alive. Okay, well, I, for some, like, I thought he would be way older than that, but no. No. That's actually realistic. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, he could (sighs) seriously be alive today. Like, he really could be Bob Joyce's like, singing pastor in Arkansas. Betty White was older than him. Uh, 99, baby, 99. That's actually kind of crazy to think about. She really went through so much in her life. Oh, she really did, she's yeah. Older, she's older than Elvis. She's older than Elvis. Like I know. It is crazy to think about, like, people. Like, I feel like I associate people with certain time periods of, like, mm-hmm. the when I learned that Anne Frank and Martin Luther King Jr. lived in the same time, I was like, oh, my mm-hmm. God. <laughs> like, What? Because I think of those as two separate times. But right. it's not. Anyway, <laughs> back to Elvis. 
So there actually have been a lot of sightings in South America of people who look like Elvis, which is interesting because that's where people thought that he would go to hide out. And there's really no explanation of why they thought that. They just were like, South America, that's where he's going. <laughs> um, so there's some pictures and stuff from South America. But, excuse me, I have to cough one second. So, um, actually, <laughs> this is so funny to me. So the QAnon people, if you don't know who they are, Mm, look them up i don't know but i know savannah knows who they are yeah it's like way too much to explain yeah i was like mm, there's no way for me to even sure honestly um the podcast and that's why we drink they do a really good um cover yeah they cover that really well they do um it's like a two-parter go listen to it if you want to know what it uh is (laughs) but the QAnon people believe in this conspiracy theory and actually they really want to prove that it's true which i think is very funny See, that makes me not want to believe in it, though. Well, I know, I know, I know. But I'm like, that's funny. Because they're a little, they're a little crazy. They, oh, they're a little crazy. Don't cover me, QAnon people. I didn't say you're crazy. I just said you're a little crazy. Anyway. <laughs> um, but what I also was going to bring up is that it's not like Elvis was, like, the first celebrity or the last to have accusations of faking their own death. So I would say probably the most famous one that I know is Michael Jackson. I was, yeah, I was thinking that one, but too. But also Avril Lavigne. Yeah, see, that one's weird because, like, she's, you know, people, she is still alive, supposedly. Maybe. <laughs> people think that but, she is actually, like, the Avril that is today is actually her old, like, double, her body double or yeah. whatever. But who knows? I don't know. There's a lot of conspiracy theories that famous people, like, fake their deaths to, like, get out of being famous. Which, we I mean, should... I get, it, though. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like no, I want to. We be should famous. definitely get into the Avril Lavigne one because that one is kind of crazy. Yeah, no, we definitely should. Future episode, one hundred percent. Um, but yeah, being famous, I don't know. Like everybody always wants to be famous, but then it does definitely come with a big price. One hundred percent. Like privacy is the most the thing. Yes, the most, yes. and that's like I'm like I want to be famous, but also like ugh, I do like having my privacy. You know, chilling. Mm-hmm. Being able to go to a store, like, I know that's got to be so hard to just not being able to, like, go to Target. Yeah. You know? I don't, well, I mean, you could go to Target, but, you know, if Elvis went to Target, he would get ambushed. Right. So. I know. I feel like there's a certain level of it. Like. For sure. If you have a certain amount of fans, there's, like, a threshold that if you're above this number, then it's too much. Yeah. No, 100. That's so true. So but, true. I don't know. But I wouldn't, ma- I wouldn't mind being famous on, like, the lower end. You I know? actually wouldn't mind being famous on any end, so. Um, <laughs> I don't care. Well, okay. Um, that's personally me. So, the last piece of evidence that I will tell you. There's much more. Like, I could have spent hours upon hours telling you all of the evidence I've ever found. But I just thought I'd hit the highlights. Um, so, the last p- piece of evidence that I'm going to go over is actually a picture taken by Mike Joseph, who was visiting Graceland with his family on December 31st in 1977. So this is um, like four or five months after Elvis died, quote unquote. Okay. And the photo is dated as well. So we know that it actually was taken on this date. Um, So it's like a picture of just like other people, but it actually ha- it shows... Elvis sitting in his pool house in the back of the picture or at least what looked to be him I won't say it was confirmed to be Elvis but like in his pool house okay well like see that also just goes back to the question of why would he be back at his own house see that's what I'm saying so like I don't know if I believe that either but I I don't know I, I don't know do that many people look like Elvis I, like, yeah, I don't know. This is what I just don't... I don't have the answers, and I wish I did, hmm. but I don't. So, um, moving on, Elvis's daughter has been questioned as to what she thinks about this theory, and she says she absolutely does not believe that he would ever do that to his fans. She said that his fans were, like, the most important to him ever, and that he never, like, forgot where he came from, you know, and, like, 
if he like he wouldn't just do that just to not be famous anymore so yeah that's what she says but i'm like i don't know maybe he would like maybe you didn't know him as good as you thought you did (laughs) or maybe she's just saying that to protect his privacy (laughs) she's like actually i know he's in witness protection because he did work for the mob but (laughs) can't say that (laughs) right so and actually Mm -hmm. this is very funny A, a study was done okay on how many people believe in this conspiracy theory <laughs> and it was done back in the like early 2000s so it's probably different now but when it was done it was concluded that 93 percent of americans believe that he did die back in 1977 and only four percent think that he faked his death oh so, wow i don't know do you think that elvis actually faked his death savannah see i don't I don't know. I feel like it's still a maybe for me because it's just like I know. I I kind of don't want to believe it because it seems a little crazy, but at the same time, I believe it. <laughs> I'm gonna just put that out there. I really, I I don't know if he's alive today. Don't know, don't know, and really don't care. But I do not think that he died. I do not mm-hmm. think that he died then. That is just it's so many coincidences before you even get into the crazy theories. Yeah. It's weird. Mm. Sus. I don't know. Elvis, if you're out there, I would love to have you on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to reveal himself for our podcast. Yeah. And our, um, however many guests we've had, welcoming Elvis Presley, ladies uh-huh. and gentlemen. Wait, what yeah. does he say when he leaves the room? Um, no, please. I don't, I don't know. No, you don't know? Dang it. What did he say? Okay, I don't know. I'm going to remember it, though. Okay. He has a famous line. But anyways, that is the conspiracy theory of Elvis Presley and his fake death. Question mark. I I don't know. That one's just... It's just crazy to me. Because... I don't know, because it's like, you can definitely see where a a celebrity would want to do that, even if it wasn't a situation where it was, like, the mob or anything. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, but I can also see him just dying the way that they say he did. I mean, that's true. Also, it's Elvis has left the building, so, obviously. Uh, He says that (laughs) as he leaves. Well, you've never heard that? Okay, I mean, I have, but I didn't realize, like, he would say that often, you know? <laughs> um, well, I don't know if he would say it often. Actually, I don't know, but it's just, like, a very famous saying. Like, Elvis has left the building. I don't know. Okay. Well. I don't know. Anyway, that's about all I know about Elvis. And I guess, in conclusion, it means I know nothing about him. Because, <laughs> I don't know. Mm-hmm. He could still be alive. He could be listening. How are we to ever know? Honestly, yeah, maybe he's just like searching the internet for like all of the stories about him on there and he pulled this one up. He's like, well, what do they have to say? Elvis, if you're out there, I promise I will not give it away that you are still alive. If you hit me up, DM me on Instagram. Yeah, send us a cameo video. <laughs> yeah, I, honestly, I'll give you so much money. I really would. I really what if would. He's like, wait, but what if he's an Elvis impersonator somewhere? Well, obviously. First of all, how are you going to be an Elvis and Bert? He's 87. I'm going to know if it's Elvis. <laughs> like. <laughs> no, like, oh, no, since I'm... he's so old. Well. And he, I don't know. Okay. I, don't I guess know. the impersonators do, like, they are the young age Elvis. of the person. 100% like, yeah. they're young Elvis. <laughs> yeah. It's an old Elvis impersonator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a thing. But you know what? It probably is. So, I don't know. Because then he. He can still have a little bit of attention without having, like, all of the attention, you know? Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> I guess the world will never know, really. Yeah, So we'll never know. There's that. But, yeah, um, definitely go check out our Instagram. Um, there'll be pics mm-hmm. from the week. If you don't know what Elvis looks like, I hope you do. And I'll, I'll make sure to include some of the pictures um, that people have taken of allegedly Elvis. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and definitely, if you have any um, experiences with Zombie Road, or if you've seen um, Elvis, or <laughs> or if you've seen Elvis. real zombies, I would also be very much oh, down yeah. to hear that. Yeah, that. Um, 
just shoot us a message or something. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about it on here. Yeah. But. Absolutely. Um, but I guess that's all I have for you guys this week. Yeah, me too. Okay, well, see you next week. Okay, cue the music. Elvis has left the building. <laughs>